So now we're working with, we're still working with graphs, but now we're talking about misleading graphs, okay? So we have to be careful when we see information that's graphed out or even like any kind of information that's advertised, we have to think critically about it because you'll notice that in newspapers and stuff like that, you'll see a big, a big you know, sale sign, let's say, but it, it could be, you know, they could have lots of balloons and lots of advertisements and a big sign out front, but then you get in there and then you know it's like 1% off or something. Right, that's technically a sale, but it's a little misleading, right? If you're, if it's a sale at like some gr uh, furniture store and they're selling a couch for fifteen hundred dollars, but it's on sale now, it's only fourteen forty nine. You know, it's like wow, that's that something that doesn't seem like as good a sale as the signs made it out to be. So that's the kind of thing that we kind of want to think critically about and um, understand that there is a way to display data that actually might be misleading. So let's take a look at this example. Again, it's on page 72 in your, in your notes there. And look at this graph. It says the cost of sheet metal by year. Okay, so we see the month of the year uh, in uh, January and July of 05, 06, 07, 08, and then January of 09. So it's over a uh, period of three and a half years or whatever it is here. So, maybe four and a half years. And so you, you look at this, and your first interpretation is what? When you see this graph right here, what would, what would you think when you see this graph right here and the, the points that are plotted on here? What do you, what's your reaction? Okay, so you're talking about this right here? Okay, so that's not straight. Okay, well, that's right. It doesn't have to be straight. This one is not straight either, technically. Okay, so that's, you notice that first. Okay, good, that's a good. What else do you notice about the trend? What about the general trend in the cost of sheet metal? What does it look like the cost is doing over the, this period of years there? What do you guys think? Yeah. It goes up there a little bit. Okay, so you're saying that it's that it goes down a little bit from here to here, it goes down a little bit, but it's mostly the same. Yeah. Because it's kind of five hundred to six hundred range there. Yeah. Because okay. It's that one year that makes it look like. Okay, so what I'm getting at here is when you look at this, okay, look at the whole graph, right? You look at this whole graph, this piece of graph right here. It looks like even. F I, I during this, uh, you know, one, four, five months, six month period here, it looks like it drops more than half of its value, right? It looks like the cost goes down drastically. Then look at, it goes up so much the next year. And then it drops again right down to the bottom here. Like it, it's quite variable. Now the thing is, the reason why this is misleading is because of this little part right here. Do you guys remember when I when we were talking about graphs and it, I said it was very important that you had the same scale, that you had a proper scale? So that means that each little piece of the graph or each section of a graph is the exact same amount. It has to be. Or else this might happen. See, what happened here is that this, um, like one square here, like in between from one line to the next, is $25. This first section right here is not $25, it's $500. So there's a big part of this graph that is not included, okay. So I'm gonna skip to the next page, you guys can turn to the next page. And this is the graph with a, with a different scale, with everything from zero to 750. Instead of taking a small snapshot, this is the graph. Now, this graph looks quite a bit more, the, the cost looks quite a bit more stable than the other one, doesn't it? With the other one, if you remember, we had a price here, we had a price way down here, then a price way up here, then a price way down here, and so on, and it was jumping wildly. When we have the proper scale, you can see that the data actually doesn't really move all that much. It still moves, but not as much as it appears to move back here. You see that? Okay, so we have to keep in mind the uh, scale, and if there's a break in the graph like this, which is okay to do, this is okay to do, you just have to understand what that means. And that means that the graph, if it was fully laid out, you know, there's actually not as much change as one would think.
Okay? So that's, that's the main part of, of that that you need to understand, that scale is important when determining if something is, uh, you know, misleading or not. Okay, so build your skills. So uh, you need to do this question with me, okay? Consider the graph below, Marcia's weekly grocery expenditures. Okay, what does this represent? Well, I guess it's pretty obvious, right? It represents the money that she spends every week on groceries, right? The amount of money spent um, over a six-week period on groceries. That's what this represents. So the, the amount that she spends each week on groceries over a six-week period. That would be the full answer for A. So what's the general trend of Marcia's weekly grocery expenditures? So what's the general trend? We start down here and then towards the end of it, it looks like it is what? Slowly, Slowly climbing. Okay, well it actually looks like it's quite drastically climbing here in this section, doesn't it? Doesn't it appear that this section right here is, you know, a super huge increase? It's kind of like, whoa lady, you're going from here all the way up to there. That looks like three or four times as much spending, right? Well, if you don't consider this over here, oh. it looks like she's you know spending this much, and then it's like four or five times more this it's a few weeks later, right? That's what it looks like. But you're right. Now you're starting to get it that we have to look carefully at the scale. We have to look at the graph itself, and we have to determine: okay, is this a very large increase, or is it a, maybe a smaller than we think? And we have one of these breaks in the graph, don't we? So that means that there's nineteen dollars that's not represented here. We have 1950 to this is only a five dollar range, this whole range, five bucks. So five bucks out of twenty-five is you know, or even out of twenty right here. Twenties right here, five bucks, you know, it's twenty to twenty-five percent, right? That, that's all we're talking about. But it, here it looks like it's a three or four hundred percent increase, right? From down here all the way to up here. So she's uh, increasing her spending over a six week period. Um, what is misleading? Well, the fact that we have a missing piece of the graph. The increase is not as sharp as it would appear in reality. Okay? The increase is not as sharp as in reality. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a few moments to draw a graph that better represents the situation. So let's draw a graph and we're going to put a proper scale on the graph and I'm going to put some the points uh, that I need to graph. I'm going to put those points off to the side here, and then we're going to take a look. Okay, so there's the points. After week one, she spends 1975, two, 1990, and so on. All up to six is twenty-four dollars. So we can put one, two, three, four, five, six down here. Use up as much of that width as you can. I could I could have spread those out just a little bit more. Would have been fine. And from here, we're going to go from $0 now to, let's do 24 at the top. So let's do 24. Okay. So now for the scale, you don't have to put every dollar on the scale. Okay, but you should fill in, you should fill in, oh man, you should have at least uh, four. I'll show you what, I, what you should do. You should go, when you've got your maximum here, if this is just a plain paper graph like I'm doing, go halfway exactly and put 12, half of this. Then do half of that again, and half of that again. That's a good place to start. And then you can fill in all the rest of the gaps. And that's how you quickly kind of throw a scale there. So these dollar amounts, you know, don't have to be uh, exactly the same as the dollar amounts on your points. They don't have to be. Okay, now I know you don't have lines either, that's why I'm doing this. So you want to be trying to be as careful uh, uh, as you can when you put the points down. So one, after week number one, and of course you could fill these in, two would be good. After week one, it's 1975. So week one, we're going all the way up here to about, so where would 1975 be? Well, it's a good, good question, isn't it? We're going to ballpark that. We're going to guess as best we can as being right there. A little closer to 21 than 18. Okay. 1990. Oof, boy, there's not much difference there, is there? So look at the increase. Hardly anything at all. 2125. So week three, we're going to 2125, just above the 21 there. 
and so on. So you can finish putting your points on to see if yours look like mine. Okay, so here's what mine looks like, and I just connected them with, um, with some lines in between so we can kind of see that general trend. Now, if we have a proper scale, do you see how the increase in um, whose groceries? Marcia's groceries cost, you see, that looks quite drastic. But if you put the proper scale in place, then it actually, you know, doesn't seem as bad, right? She's saving lots of money on groceries. She's saving lots of money on groceries? $25 yeah for a week that's yeah you're right 25 bucks uh, less than 25 bucks right closer to average 20 probably um, 21 maybe so so yeah so this is her expenditures does everyone see how a proper scale on a graph gives you maybe a more accurate picture so you have to be careful with that when you see this in advertising in different places okay all right is that the right page oh yeah sorry Okay, so number 12 says this, consider the two graphs below that show the percentage of the population of Alberta living in rural areas, okay? So the percentage of Alberta population in rural areas from 1901 to 2001, and then from uh, percentage of population living in rural areas, 1901 to 2001 as well. So these are graphs that look like they're measuring the same thing, okay? Which graph makes it appear that the decrease in rural population was more rapid? The bigger one. The first one. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Okay, the first one or the bigger one? Which one do you think? The first one. Okay, the first one appears that the drop was more rapid. Look at how steep these lines are compared to, this looks like a pretty gradual kind of decrease, doesn't it? Look at how smooth that is. That's really, really smooth. This one here is like, boom, drops off the map, doesn't it? So we're missing some points here, and the years are compacted, you see? So even when you have a smaller scale, you can have a graph that looks pretty weird. Now, this is a little bit off, um, off topic, not off topic, it's on the same topic. But I want to show you this graph, okay? So this graph is what I'm talking about. When you see a graph like this, this, is, this represents some kind of increase. And it appears that this increase is very sharp and very great between 1 and, you know, 12. But notice that I'm only showing you a portion of the graph for the scale on the left. You see that? And so I just kind of prepared this a little bit before class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the setting. Instead of going from like 5 to 10, I'm going to go from 0 to 10 the way it should be. Now look at the same graph. Do you see how this increase doesn't seem as drastic? You see? Okay. So this is kind of what we're talking about. Uh, if we had that same drop as in, you know, back over here, right? And if I squished those up even more, it would look like almost like a the line's going straight down. Like, whoa, we're in big trouble. It's a marketing trick. Yeah, it is a marketing trip, it, trick. It's an advertisement sort of ploy to um, sort of bend the data towards you know someone's personal agenda really I, I mean it can be used that way so you have to be careful and you know what if if someone wanted to argue that we have a real problem in the rural areas like like there's a real real problem that we need to address which one do you think they would choose to show the people they're trying to convince the first one. yeah probably the first one it's like look at this drop right here I mean this is this is killing us right here just absolutely killing us well over here it's the same drop but it looks quite a bit more gradual. So that's what we're saying. So that's, you can answer these questions now based on, I think, what we just talked about. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of time here, and you guys can go ahead and do these questions right here based on those, those graphs. So I'll show you those graphs here again. All right, so it looks like most of you are down here. So let's just go over this real quick. So we talked about A and, and B, I guess, right? Um, graph 1 appears that the decrease is quite a bit more rapid because it's steeper, right? It's, it's, it's squished up a little bit. The width of the graph is smaller. Um, maybe an actual better uh, representation, uh, the actual change. Probably graph 2 because there's more years that are represented. There's more data points, and that's the big thing. There are more data points, which you should make sure you have that. More years represented, more data points because that's the big thing the more data points you have 
the more accurate you'll be because we've skipped a lot of data points here in graph one, right? Okay, so C, this, these are the numbers that I have for C. Yours should be pretty close to this, um, but they may be slightly, slightly different. Use the graphs to interpolate what percent of the population was rural in 1916. Okay, 1916. So in graph one, 1916, I tried to find where 1916 would be right about a year, and I went up there, it looks like about 64 or so. 1916 here, with this graph, is barely over 60. So you see how you'd guess maybe 62 or so. So right away, um, when we interpolate and when we look at these graphs, you know, we're not getting the same sort of um, picture. In what year was the population half of the rural? Well, in graph one, it would be about 1950, was my, was my uh, best guess there. And in graph two, it was definitely uh, later than that. It was 1953, and I can show you my work there. So 1953 here, um, that was where it was right here, 50%. Uh, and then 50% over here was, you know, 50, 51, maybe even 49, depending on how you look at that. Okay. And then use the graph to extrapolate what percent of the population will be rural in 2011. So again, with this graph over here, without as many points, it, it's steeper here, but it's also flatter here. Uh, and actually, sorry, no, it's steeper here uh, as well. So this decline will seem greater. And I put about 17% maybe in 2011. And uh, over here, it looks like it's really close to 20, so maybe 19% in this one. Now, if you had slightly different numbers, that's fine. The, the point is, is that those numbers are going to be a little bit different if the graphs are shaped a little bit different. And if we're missing data points, we can actually take a 20-year trend and apply that when really we should be, we could be taking only a 10-year trend and being a little bit more accurate. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about what we're trying to learn here with, with uh, the differences in these graphs? So more data points, is that more accurate or is, uh, is it less accurate? More data points is? More, more, accurate. more accurate. Okay, good. Um, an even scale, a, a full even scale, is that more accurate or less accurate? Or should we take a chunk of the scale and just show a part of it? The full, yeah, the full value, the full uh, proper um, uniform scale. Okay, good. You guys are getting it. All right, so that's the lesson on the third part there for 2.1. Uh, and you're going to be now practicing your skills. So you guys can start on these questions here and do these on your own and look back to your examples. And uh, I will help you kind of periodically if you need help. But here are your questions for your practice, your skills. Can I roll Washington? Yes, if you need to. Oh. But make it quick. Mm -hmm. Make it quick. I got a question, but it doesn't really map the campaign if you want to add it later. Later. Okay, get started on number one there. Yeah.